What's up guys, Hamnish here, and today we're back with yet more Destiny 2 and Forsaken DLC news. So we have some new trailers for each of the Barons that we'll see in the Forsaken expansion. We get a pretty cool look at each of these characters and some new lore associated with each of them. Also in this video, we're going to talk about some recently declassified loot in Destiny 2. We're going to take a better look at some of the Forsaken armor sets. We have a set for the Titan. We'll talk a little bit about obtaining these pieces of gear, random perks and collections. The August 28th update and some things to look out for. We're going to break down a bunch of changes as to how power leveling will work, additional changes to activities, ways to obtain new gear, and a bunch of other DLC stuff. So if you guys do enjoy the video, a rating down below is as always super appreciated. But now, let's get into the video. So starting out, Bungie posted a bunch of trailers for the Barons that we'll see in the expansion. Of course, the Barons are the leaders of the Scorn who have paired up with Aldrin and are causing chaos throughout the Reef. So they show off the Fnatic, they say, second only to Prince Aldrin, the Fnatic is the first of the Scorn, he preaches that the Fallen must die for them to grow stronger. The next in line is the Machinist, she's an expert in munitions and an insatiable thief. There are outstanding bounties for her role in the disappearance of an entire Dead Orbit Necroclast vessel and every one of its guardian escorts. Next up, known as the Butcher of Bamberga and the Terminus of the Grey Legion, the trickster dupes others into doing her dirty work and leaves deadly surprises for her victims. I gotta say, those are some scary teeth right there. But then we have the Hangman, who tears apart servitors to feed his fellow barons with ether. His sadistic obsession with machines built in the Traveler's image drove the fallen House of Wolves to extinction. We have Canix Two Fingers, also known as the Mad Bomber, who was locked within the Prison of Elders for his attempted assassination of Awoken Royalty. I really like how there is backstory to each of these kind of barons. Of course, they were previously members of various fallen houses, and so while they do have have new names, they also carry some of their old fallen names as well. But with his cybernetic eye, the rifleman put down three awoken paladins during the shootout at Palace Falls, and more than one notch on his belt is for a guardian's ghost. A little hint right there as well, to Cade's ghost, of course. But we have the Mindbender, a runty dreg known as Hirax, who fell into the moon's hellmouth and his time in the hive's domain changed him. And this guy has his own hive throne world, so that's pretty crazy. But and finally, 486 Awoken Dead, 83 fallen encampments infected at Dead River Run. With a cavalry of toxic pikes, the rider and her gang usher a storm of dust and chaos, which few survive. So I think these are pretty neat. These enemies absolutely offer an awesome opportunity to do enemy themed drops and pieces of gear. We don't know whether that is going to be a thing. Game Informer did actually ask Bungie, will there be unique pieces of gear associated with the Barons? And the answer that we got is that we would have to wait, play the game and find out for ourselves, which is super cheesy, man. There better be some loot for these guys. That would be absolutely insane. But here is a mashup of all of these Barons in action. So let me know any of your thoughts on that stuff. Next though, a few people had noticed there have been some classified emblems in the database since one of the recent updates. In the hotfix we had on Monday, a couple actually became declassified. So we do have the Buried City right here. Of course, the Buried City was an area on Mars in Destiny 1. This is also a Warmind logo. So obviously in some way connected to the Warmind expansion and Mars itself. I should mention these have actually been in the game since season one. So they were there from the very beginning, but were actually hidden. 
or at least that is what the database says. But there's another one right here called Controlled Chaos, which is pretty cool. And you actually see these structures which hold the platforms on Titan there. These are both just common emblems. Often these end up being associated with kind of emblem bonuses for buying certain items, whether it could be game merchandise, figures related stuff, pre-orders. But you never know, we have also seen similar emblems be rewards for secrets and things like that in the past. But clearly these are going to come into the game in some form or another. Ginza on Reddit has actually collected some of the details for pieces of gear in the Forsaken expansion. Not entirely sure how they've done this, whether it's through the database or whether they've just collected the information from various reveals. But a full set they've got here is the Scatterhorn Titan armor. Now we are seeing the Titan stuff, but I believe that there will be a set of this for the Hunter and the Warlock as well. The Scatter actually refers to a battle which happened during the Reef Wars. So there is some cool Awoken and Reef lore here, but this is a set that will be available, as we can see, from completing activities and earning rank up packages on the Tangled Shore. So these come from the Spider, the vendor in the Tangled Shore. And we also see random perks. The item cannot be reacquired from collections. So any of the stuff that does have random perks on it will not actually feature in the collections during the launch of Forsaken. It seems like more of these sets could actually end up being revealed. Of course, we have seen a lot of different armor sets. There's a set that we know comes from the Dreaming City and particularly from the Blind Well. We've seen curious armor like this stuff right here the Warlock is wearing. Clearly it's going to be another full set. I'm going to talk about some of that stuff in just a moment, but we know about the Scatter set. We've seen a Titan with the Wing Discipline set. There is going to be a full separate raid set of gear, as well as Vanguard Crucible. And this stuff, of course, is made much more interesting by the fact that armor pieces will actually have perks on them now. And briefly to reiterate, in case you'd missed any of the bonuses, we get bonuses like Momentum Transfer, which returns from D1. This grants you grenade energy on melee hits, unflinching submachine gun aim, as well as hand cannon reserves, a bonus called Perpetuation, Another one called Arrow Scavenger. Scavenger stuff sounds kind of like ammo bonuses of some sort. You've got Recuperation, which sounds like a recovery bonus. There are bonuses like Pulse Rifle Targeting, which improve target acquisition, accuracy, and ADS speeds for Pulse Rifles. So presumably we'll get all different weapon types. And then the ammo carry themselves for different weapon types. So these perks are gonna be fully fledged Destiny 1 style armor bonuses, which is really cool. Of course, the first taste of any changes that we're going to see for Forsaken will actually arrive on August 28th when they did the preload update. Just to clarify, because I've seen a lot of questions about this, the August 28th update will absolutely include the main sandbox changes for the Forsaken expansion, as well as all of the weapon slot changes themselves. So in the last tab, they actually said fewer than three weeks until the start of year two on August 28th, where you'll get your hands on the sandbox changes to combat that we showed off on stream. So those changes will absolutely happen in the August 28th update. And they also said as well, Year 2 will begin on August 28th, so that's something to bear in mind. Bungie have said they are going to clarify about when the season ends, when the new season begins and all of that kind of stuff, probably later today in this week of Bungie, but it looks like that is going to be the official start of Year 2 on August 28th. Just to reiterate the actual change list that we know of right now, we've got the weapon slot changes, milestone and challenge updates, director updates, heroic story missions, bulk shader deletion, and 200 additional vault slots. That and more is coming Coming on August 28th. Other changes that will start to happen will actually be changes which affect Forsaken's DLC endgame. So the Prestige Nightfall difficulty is actually going away, as well as the traditional heroic strikes that we have right now. And in the patch on August 28th, they will actually add various difficulties to Vanguard strikes. So the playlists will actually offer power 300, 400, and 500 strikes. But you'll only be able to play these when you are within a 40 power kind of gap of that difficulty. So once you're at 40 power or above any given strike, the previous difficulty will no longer be available, with the exception of the 500 power option, which will always be there. And they had mentioned that these will offer incremental kind of power increases. Bear in mind, we are going to have three different Nightfalls available each week, able to grant some kind of powerful gear. Another weekly event will be Ascendant Challenges in the Dreaming City, so Game Informer actually showed off some gameplay of them. There will be a mixture of combat and puzzle kind of activities, 
And there's going to be a portal into one of these Ascendant Realms open every single week. And so basically it will be kind of like one of the milestone activities for the week. Go and do the Ascendant Challenge for the week. But of course they're changing up the directory and things like that. So it won't necessarily pop up. Here is your Ascendant Challenge milestone, you know. It's going to come up on the map and give you a hint to its location. And that is some of the stuff they showed off with the new director that we'll see. But once again, you will get a piece of powerful loot when you complete one of these Ascendant Challenges. And Game Informer say this will give you a late game power bump outside of the weekly milestones. So this is going to be one of the weekly kind of reset activities. But of course we know that different stuff will reset at different times. On top of this, there will be hidden chests in these Ascendant Challenges. We can also see here as well that Toland, a mysterious warlock character that we've heard about in the lore for a very long time, is actually talking to us during one of these challenges, which is pretty cool. Bungie also teased that warlock armor that we spoke about as being kind of one of the rewards or linked to the Ascendant Realm in the Dreaming City. So maybe there will be a full armor set that you acquire by completing these challenges. Bungie have said numerous times that they weren't going to show off raid gear or give major details about the raid. So I'm assuming this warlock armor is not raid armor, but it is Dreaming City related armor. It's also not the armor which comes from the Blind Well in Dreaming City. So there's going to be multiple sets to get. Dreaming City in the end game in general, I think is looking to be shaping up really, really nicely for Forsaken. But guys, that is pretty much going to summarize the news for now. Robbie Stevens from Bungie did say he can confirm that this week at Bungie is going to be packed full of juicy Forsaken info. So that'll be later on today. If you're watching this video a few hours after it's gone live, you can click the video on screen right now to check out Bungie's latest juicy Forsaken update. Also, be sure to hit subscribe if you are new to the channel. And if you have enjoyed the video, a like below is very much appreciated, guys. Thank you for tuning in as always. And whatever you get up to, I hope you have an awesome day.